Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Barry Valushko. Uh, I'm working for a Glanton company. Uh, and I want to, I'd, I'd want to present how to move, how to implement DNN websites inside the corporate networks. So the first thing, thanks to our, our all sponsors, and uh, Glanton uh, is a company that was founded it in 2005, and our base, uh, uh, our we are implementing uh, DNN websites uh, inside the uh, corporate networks that are at the top of the windows uh, of, of the Microsoft products. Uh, those are some of our clients and they are some of them are very very big uh, I'm the leader of the AD Pro uh, suite uh, AD Pro uh, are the modules that, al that allows um, uh, integration between Active Directory and DNN uh, so what what's the problem is uh, if you go uh, if you if, if, if you install uh, the DNN website inside the corporate network you must know that corp that, uh, that Active Directory has a uh, their own uh, identities and DNN of course also has uh, their own uh, identities so what we get we uh, get a duplicated user identities, because user identities are in DNN and in Active Directory. And this is not good, uh, because it's hard to manage uh, identities in, uh, double, uh, in, in double places. Of course, users, the end users, the corporate employees, uh, doesn't know why they need to uh, create two accounts, first, first in DNN, second in uh, Active Directory. So they are will really using same passwords, same usernames, and this is the very uh, big uh, risk. Uh, it's a security hole because it's if the uh, DNN uh, password will, will be compromised, uh, the whole DNN network will, will, will be compromised and uh, company uh, simple cancel this project. Compa co uh, company doesn't allow uh, for a DNN to enter to the company. Yeah. Uh, so what we get, uh, we created um, uh, modules that fix that situation. So for example, from the Active Directory uh, administrator perspective, uh, Active Directory administrator will manage only uh, Active Directory uh, accounts. He even doesn't need to know that the DNN exists or that in DNN are some accounts uh, and some users. Um, from the employees perspective, uh, employees are, are always very important because um, now uh, they will have one username and one password and using this one identity they will uh, have access to the DNN website and Active Directory. Same username, same password. And uh, DNN rules. Um, uh, I, I should mention that uh, our products uh, get the user profile from Active Directory and uh, push that user identity from Active Dire Directory to DNN, uh, hold the profile and uh, all the groups, but no password. Uh, password is never uh, stored in uh, DNN website, so even if uh, DNN website we, we will be compromised, the password, uh, the Active direct di Directory password uh, will be safe because it's only uh, on the Active Directory server. Mm. At the, uh, our products uh, also 
uh, copies uh, the Active Directory groups from Active Directory to uh, VLAN website. And what's that mean? Uh, if that that's mean that uh, Active Directory uh, administrator uh, can manage s uh, DNN, the secure the page. Um, the, s the security context uh, of the DNN by using the active directory groups because um, the, those groups are copied from active directory to DNN. I will show you a few examples. It will be more... Uh, okay, when the, what's happening when the user uh, tries to sign in to the DNN website? Uh, first thing, Mm, it's an authentication process uh, where user enters the username and the password and there is then there is a request to the Active Directory and the, the password is validated. Uh, is this correct or not? And Active Directory send a replay, of course, and like I said before, the password is never uh, stored, kept uh, in uh, DNN server. Uh, when the username and the password is correct, we have a uh, authorization process. Uh, Active Directory just says, yes, this user can sign in to the DNN or he can't sign in. Uh, it's because there are some uh, group checking and once again here, mm, the Active Directory administrator uh, can set access uh, to the to to the DNN website or DNN pages. Uh, Active Directory administrator that even doesn't know how the DNN works. One quick question. Yes. Um, does the DNN need to be sitting inside the firewall? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, it must be inside this firewall. We have, but I will describe every, everything uh, in the next slides. Of course, uh, if there is a new employee uh, in the um, corporate, uh, he doesn't exist in uh, DNN. He already, let's say, he already exists in Active Directory, but not in, in DNN. So we create that user in DNN. Uh, we also sync all the profile fields. So uh, all uh, properties, user properties, uh, use, uh, whole user profile, from Active Directory is pushed to the DNN. So uh, we have in, the, uh, in, in DNN user and his full identity profile. We can also set uh, the custom uh, fields, uh, custom act, act, act Active Directory properties. We can also push to the DNN. Uh, permission. Uh, uh, we. Uh, there is a special in, in interface that we can choose which role could, uh, should be pushed from the Active Directory to DNN. Uh, in the future, this, this will uh, help to manage uh, users in DNN from the Active Directory uh, level. Of course, if uh, the employee uh, leaves the company, uh, in Active Directory there is a tick, uh, user is disabled, and our module will delete that user uh, from the DNN website or it, it, it will mark him as a uh, deleted user. And if everything is fine, user will, will, will be automatically, uh, user will, will, will be signed in to the uh, DNN and he, is, and, and he can start the work. Uh, this, w w what I show here, uh, the first step, user needs to enter username and the password. It's confusing for a, for a users that uh, when they, for, for, a com, uh, for a corporate employees that when he start, when he start his computer, he must enter the password username and the password to the uh, PC. And then he's asking about same thing once again. So we have something like a single sign on. Uh, so a user doesn't need to enter that the username and the password. Once again, he is automatically logged in. But we need, just need to meet some of the conditions. And 
here is a um, simple picture how uh, this topology can look like. So we have a corporate. Uh, corporate is, is uh, protected by, by the firewall. Uh, and inside the corporate, we have, we, we, we have, of course, the Active Directory server, where the users are. We have a, a web server where, where the DNN is hosted. Uh, and we have uh, users. And if everything is inside the um, corporate network, corporate network that doesn't have uh, access from the outside, users uh, can uh, automatically sign in without any problems. And in this, uh, uh, on this use case, it's uh, LDAP protocol. Uh, LDAP protocol is quite old. It's working, it's, it's, it's stable, but also have uh, some of the limitations. For example, you can't get more than uh, 1,000 records in one request. Um, it's important, for example, if you want, uh, if a company uh, has a, let's say, uh, uh, 10,000 uh, of users, uh, and you want to push all those users to the DNN website. Using the LDAP protocol, uh, you, you can do that. Uh, we, we have a modules that can do that, but sometimes uh, it simply doesn't work and you need to fix something. LDAP is okay, but it's old protocol. And especially uh, if we have our users that needs to log in to this uh, DNN website from outside the company, from home, from hotel, uh, we, and we need to uh, create some kind of the external access. Uh, Microsoft doesn't recommend LDAP protocol in this situation. Uh, they uh, created some other solutions that, that I will describe in the, uh, on the other slides. We can do that. Uh, if the users are in the hotel or in, in the house, we can set up the VPN connection. Uh, and after that, it is secure, but it's, it's, it's hard to uh, explain for each employee how to set up this VPN connection. It's, uh, yeah. So there are some easiest uh, solutions. And for the LDAP protocol, we have a, a suite of uh, AD Pro modules. Um, login module that allows you to sign in to the DNN website. We have a, a sync module. Sync module is, uh, for us, let's say, at every night, you want to get all users from Active Directory to the DNN. Then you can use uh, sync module. So when, when, the, when the employee uh, comes to the work, uh, he will have his, all, his pro profile and profile of all other users. So for example, we have a DNN with the forum module and on the forum are, are users and uh, I can see all users all up with updated protocols, even if that user uh, doesn't sign, sign in. We have uh, something like, like, like a password Xperia alert. Uh, sometimes uh, in, the, in, in the corporates, it's often the users often needs to change the passwords. And uh, we display a nice looking message. Hey, your password will expire in 14 days. Please change that password. And this could be done using the AD Pro module, uh, so the, the users doesn't call the, ad the administrator. Uh, it's much easier uh, to, to do that uh, using the uh, DNN website. There are some uh, modern solutions. Uh, here we have a similar Si si uh, similar situation like on the screen before, but here the web server is outside of the company. So we can't use the LDAP 
LDAP protocol, it's not recommended, we can use ADFS. Uh, those of you who's selling the modules or services and wants to have the DNN website on their own, uh, on their own uh, hosting, uh, could use that solution. Uh, so here, uh, it's, it's situation like a uh, user from the internet, it's trying to uh, go to the DNN website, and the DNN website is uh, redirecting him to the uh, corporate uh, proxy site where is only uh, the login screen, where, the, where he needs to enter the username and the password, and if this is uh, okay, and the Active Directory sent a message, hey, you can trust that user. And uh, if uh, DNN get that message, that this user, that, that we can trust that user, he's logged in. Mm, it's, everything is over HTTPS prot uh, protocol here. It's, it's ADFS uh, at the top of the H H H HTTPS. So you doesn't need to open additional uh, ports uh, in the corporate uh, firewall. This solution is very secure and it has uh, some benefits. Uh, so because let's, let's, uh, let's see in other way. We have a claims our ap applications. In other words, applications that using the ADFS protocol. And uh, DNN is using this uh, ADFS protocol, okay? But there are uh, other uh, applications that using this, this ADFS protocol. For example, here is the SharePoint. And, but uh, there are uh, many, many other uh, ap 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 applications. And if user sign in uh, to one of these applications, he will be automatically uh, sign in to the other applications. So, for an employee perspective, I start my work, I go to the, for example, check my uh, e uh, email uh, box in Gmail, then I first type my username and password, and then when I go to the SharePoint, when I go to the DNN, when I, where if I go to the uh, Dropbox, I don't need to enter once again, username and the password. Everything uh, is automatically done by the ADFS. Uh, it's worth to mention that uh, ADFS is working on the uh, Microsoft Windows uh, 2012 and above. So, so usually all uh, the servers are uh, on the 2018 or so it it will work on all servers all, all almost all servers and here is a use case where uh, where we have a uh, maybe who someone wants to uh, put uh, his own module uh, on the DNN website and give an access to s and sell that website with that module for a company. Uh, in this case, we have an internet. Let's say and here is somewhere uh, our uh, hosting. We have our website, we have our module, and we selling this for a company. And using the ADFS protocol, company employees can uh, go and look uh, what's happening on the blog and also uh, customers, uh, employees uh, from outside the company also can do that and uh, they, they, all the identities are secure, which is very important from, from the co co company perspective. And for that we, are, uh, we have the ADFS Pro authentication module. Uh, it's also worth to mention that uh, ADFS in easy way allows you to add the multi-factor authentication. Uh, it's, it's just a, a few clicks and user needs to enter his username, password and for example a text message from the mobile phone. Uh, 
because all the configuration process uh, of the multi-factor aut authentication happens uh, on the Active Directory server. So from the DNN administrator perspective, uh, you don't need to do anything because everything should do the Active Directory administrator and you can, s you, you can have a DNN with multi-factor authentication and say, yes, my, my website is very secure because it has a multi-factor authentication. Uh, the latest Microsoft technology is the Azure. Uh, it's similar to the ADFS. Uh, on the Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, uh, are all identities and uh, other, uh, other uh, programs are treated uh, as a software as a service. Uh, what that means? Uh, that means that uh, f the first thing, uh, there are much more uh, software as a service applications uh, for Azure than for uh, uh, ADFS. Yes, uh, because uh, Azure is the, the, the most important for the Microsoft. So if you're thinking uh, where to invest, ADFS or maybe Azure, I think the Azure is better. Uh, as Azure have a better future. And same thing like uh, like in uh, same thing like in uh, ADFS. If you sign in, for example, to the Dropbox, you already sign into the Salesforce DNN and Office and whatever. Uh, Azure have also the multi-factor authentications. Uh, Azure have uh, have uh, ma many other things uh, that creates your DNN website more secure. For, for example, uh, I remember that I uh, get a support case and somebody asked me, hey, here is my credentials, username and the password for, uh, to the Azure account and please change something because I don't have a time. I said, okay, I can do that. So I enter in the username I, I, to log into to the Azure password and then I get a message from the Azure, sorry, we can't sign you in because uh, this user is from US and you are from Europe. If you want, we can send you a text message on, on your mobile phone and if, the, if, if you type this text message to this text box, text box you will be uh, uh, logged in. So there is a multi-factor uh, authentication for uh, different re regions. Uh, there is something that there, there are a lot of metrics. So uh, let's imagine that from the Active di di Directory, from the Azure administrator perspective, he have a lot of users, he have a lot of applications. One of these applications is a DNN, and he looks at these metrics, those users, uh, a, a big metrics, and he can uh, he can. Uh, uh, find a potential uh, security hole using those metrics. So this is important for an Active Directory uh, administrator, but if our DNN will use that technology, uh, it will be a big plus for us, I think. And for Azure, we, we have a uh, AD Pro Azure aut uh, authentication module. Um, all our modules are available on, on the DNN store. Uh, you can down download uh, it. Uh, mm, all have a trial version, 14 days. Uh, all trial versions have all the features, so you can test everything, what you need. Uh, for, we have a documentation center. Uh, there is the, on the documentation center there is a list of the list of the user guides. It's sometimes it's not so simple to implement the DNN website inside the Active Directory. So so it's it's really worth to uh, read the documentation before you start uh, doing that. 
I also have a, a few uh, blog posts about the Azure IDFS and Active Directory. I think that's all. Any questions? Uh, am I correct in uh, remembering that you said uh, DNN does not record the password? Yes. If it's a single sign off, how mm -hmm. long subsequent? Okay. Uh, if there is a sim simple sign on. So I described three protocols LDAP, ADFS, and Azure Active Directory. LDAP. Uh, LDAP, uh, oh, maybe I will switch to this. Here is the LDAP and the single sign on. Uh, if everything is inside the one company, there is a protocol, a Kerberos, it's an old protocol, very uh, not easy protocol, uh, but there is something li like a Kerberos, and Kerberos uh, using the Kerberos, uh, single sign on is uh, working at the top of, of the Kerberos protocol. But this is only the intranet. Uh, only if we are, if we are speaking uh, about the, uh, what is inside the company. That's the first single sign on. Password is never kept in, in, in the DNN. Uh, but if we're talking about the federation services, in, in this case, uh, ADFS send a token to the client here, uh, to the client here. And using that token, uh, using that token, uh, user can say, "Hey, I'm a. You can trust me." It's it's more complicated, of, of course, but there is something like like a token. That there is a trust um, rela relationship. So uh, DNN trust that user. I trust you. I can log you in. Same thing with the other applications. Uh, if, if, if we have a more than a one application. Yes, and uh, Azure Ac Active Directory works in very similar thing. So the password is never, uh, password. It, it's, it's hard to compromise the password, but you still have a, the single sign on. I don't know if I explained that correctly. Uh, there are really v v lots of technical details how to do that, but it's uh, it's 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 secure. It's, uh, for example, Azure is at the top of the uh, OAuth uh, protocol and OpenID. Uh, those are the open standards, and if Microsoft trusts those standards, we can say, okay, it's 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 good and we can also trust those standards. Can you uh, connect the AD and another um, mm -hmm. to authenticate? So you can authenticate against Active Directory or something else on the site, or is it just one? Mm -hmm. one uh, often. The, uh, the company uh, usually have more than a one Active Directory uh, domain. And in this case, there is first thing uh, to fix is uh, if, for, for example, I'm an uh, employee of a company that has a multiple Active Directory domains, and I'm uh, in domain num n n number one, my username is in dom domain number one, n number two, number three, and I have same username in the multiple Active Directory domain, how to push same three users to one DNN, because uh, in DNN, the username needs to be unique. Uh, you can't have uh, two exactly same usernames in the database. DNN doesn't allow that. So if you have a more than a one uh, place where are the users, more than a one active directory system, we created something like a, uh, user name suffix, so uh, username prefix, sorry, username prefix, uh, where the prefix is, is, is the name of the, uh, of the Active Directory domain. So we can extend, I think, each of these uh, 
So we can connect one DNN to multiple Active Directory domains. And it's, sometimes it's happened. Sometimes it's, yeah. <laughs> One scenario I had a year ago was mm -hmm. when the client, almost similar scenario, but asked us to build a mobile app in iOS mm -hmm. that could do what you do. I didn't mm -hmm. ask John because mm -hmm. I didn't think yes, on iOS. Mm -hmm. The ad <laughs> advantage uh, of the Azure is that that we can connect. Yes, the DNN, uh, many many websites, but also the mobile apps, for example. Also, uh, all this Internet of, of Things, IoT, and many many other things. Uh, so, Azure is very very important, I think, because it's a huge ecosystem. Uh, where are the websites? But not only websites, mobile apps, and many many other things. The problem was the uh, client was a farmer. They don't put anything in the cloud. It had to be within their premises. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we uh, some companies uh, wants to have all their users on premise, and they never uh, put the user identities to the cloud, to the cloud, to some other company. In this case, to the Microsoft. So. Uh, there is a solution where, let's say, here we have an on-premise Active Directory and there is a link between the on-premise Active Directory and Microsoft Azure and from Microsoft Azure to the SaaS application. And in this case, uh, all identities, the password, usernames, are only on-premise uh, in Active Directory. And cloud is just a, some kind of the proxy. That's the Microsoft solution, one, one of the Microsoft solutions. Thank you very much. Okay. And have a good evening. <laughs>